So I've got a conundrum. I am going on holiday soon and I don't know what book to bring. I have so many unread books on these shelves. These are double stacked, by the way. They go down to my ankles and above my head. But choice paralysis takes over when I'm packing my bag and I don't know what to bring. So I turn to one of my favorite booktubers, Lauren and the Books. She does this thing called first line battles where she picks books off her shelves, reads out the first line of each one, ranks them, and then whoever wins gets to come on holiday with her. That's what I'm gonna be doing today. So I think that if you're also in a conundrum about what to read, you might get some ideas from the books waiting for me on these bookshelves behind me. Just on my defence, everything from this onwards has generally been read. Well, actually, no, apart from a few, the, the general mood is this side has been read, this side hasn't been read. But that's still quite a lot of unread books. <laughs> So if you'd like to discover my TBR shelves with me, then we're gonna get right into it. Right, let's pick the 10 books. I'm not allowed to peek at the first lines, but I will pick the 10 books that might come with me. Okay, these are 10 books that have been on my to be read list, a lot of them for a long time. I've tried to pick a range of genres. They were all fiction by accident, but I feel like maybe that's just my subconscious being like, Lena, take a fucking seat. Just sit down. Just read some fiction for a while. You don't have to be researching on holiday. So let's crack the spines and see what they've got. First up, I've got two science fiction books. I've been reading a bit more science fiction in the last 12 months, I'd say. I just read the fifth season. I read Parable of the Sower. It's a genre that I'm slowly getting into, but I'm aware that like I don't like all of it. So these two have been hanging around on my shelves for a while because of that. This one is out, stumbled at the first hurdle, can't say the name. Axum's End? Axum's End by Lindsay Ellis, who is a YouTuber and amazing writer that I really respect. This is her first fiction book she's released, I think. I got this because a friend was getting rid of it and I was like, oh, maybe. Basically, I really respect her, but I, the, the sell of this book isn't like immediately what I gravitate to. So let's see what the first line has in order for us. Oh, it's a letter. It's a redacted email, I think. I understand your frustration having so little to work with. Intriguing, but no dice. That's going on the no pile, I think. This one's called Triangulum. Look up the premise for this. It sounds really interesting. And I bought this because it was from an independent publisher that I wanted to support during the pandemic. I was 14 when I first lingered in front of the mirror next to our home computer and touched myself. Coming twice, so I wouldn't think about mama's abduction. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's going on the maybe pile. <laughs> What is my life? Okay, um, these also come in a pair, I guess. They're both honest, short, small stories about difficult personal relationships. This one's called Concerning My Daughter by Kim Hae Jin. It's translated from Korean and it's about a woman struggling to accept her daughter's girlfriend, I believe. First line is as follows. The server brings over two bowls of hot Udon. Look, a book can be good without having a first good line. It doesn't mean I'm never gonna read it, but it doesn't, it can't win this competition. In the Dream House, I think this one is about domestic abuse. I dare say you have heard of the Dream House. It is, as you know, a real place. Mm, that's not bad. I feel like this might be a good, like, opening paragraph, but the first sentence isn't giving me that, so. Mm, no, the... Look, we've got to be we've got to be brutal. Triangulum's the only one who's in the maybe pile right now. This wins points for mobility when it comes to taking things on holiday. Um, this is called The Therapist, and it's about an epidemic where uh, people are catching an illness that makes them transparent. It was written before our our pancetta, so let's see what the first line's got. When the anguish between us grows so palpable that it manifests veins and a nervous system, an entire body which darts from beneath the bed frames and behind dresses to howl the night away, I finally relent to Simone's demands and agree to meet with a therapist. So that's actually, it's a long first line, but it's coherent and I want to know more. The Leopard is an Italian classic I've always been curious about and I do have this really beautiful edition. So even if I take it on holiday and I don't like it, it will look very good in Instagram pictures because I am shallow and don't you forget it. The first line is in Latin, I think it's a prayer. And then the second line is, the daily recital of the rosary was over. Ah, 
Not today, folks. Maggie O'Farrell Hamnet. I'm definitely going to read this. I recently read The Marriage Portrait and loved it. So I will be reading this at some point. But will it be this holiday? Let's find out. A boy is coming down a flight of stairs. There's no need to say anything. Like I said, you don't need a good first line to be a good writer, but I've got to stay true to the premise of the competition. Julian Barnes, England, England. This is about an eerie project to make England into a fun fair or something. What's your first memory, someone would ask, and she would reply, I don't remember. No. Oh, I got this book at a indie bookshop in Oxford because it did that blind date thing where they wrap it up and they explain the book without you getting to know the name of the book or the cover. This is called An Unnecessary Woman and this is the first sentence. You could say I was thinking of other things when I shamelessly shampooed my hair blue and two glasses of red wine didn't help my concentration. I quite like that. That's going in the maybe pile. And finally, Chuck Palahniuk's Haunted, which I like the premise of, but I'm hesitant about whether I will like the author. And also this book might scare me, which could be fun when you're on holiday in an unknown place. It could actually be a good ride, but I get the impression that he's a bit of a loose cannon. <laughs> so this is the first sentence of Haunted. This was supposed to be a writer's retreat. It was supposed to be safe. I like that too. Okay, these are the four on the short list. Let me all just give those first lines one more reread. We'll see where we go from there. The judges are deliberating. It's getting heated. The jury shouting at each other. Everybody's sweating. I think that I'm going to take this one because I really, I really think that this exemplifies what a good first line is as well. Just the whole like, it's, oh, no, I'm gonna, do you know, no, no, no. I'm gonna take this one. Look, I can't, I can't honestly let any of the other ones win, can I, when this is the first line. I was 14 when I first lingered in front of the mirror next to our home computer and touched myself coming twice so I wouldn't think about mama's abduction. It's got everything. It's got the shock factor. It's got the intrigue of like, why is she doing it next to her home? Why is there a mirror by her home computer? Why is she doing it next to her home computer? And then the twist at the end. So I wouldn't think about mama's abduction. It juxtaposes two things that shouldn't be two thoughts that go together. It's awkward. It sets a tone of voice. This is coming with me. And as a treat, I will read you the second line. I'd never done that in front of the mirror before and I'd never gone beyond the number, but I told myself to stop when Tata woke up coughing. I snuck back into, oh, go on then, two more lines. I snuck back into my room instead and listened to him leaving the house. Later, I'd learn that he'd gone to hospital. It's a book set in South Africa about a girl who is a maths prodigy and her mum goes missing and there's a strange apparition that comes to her called the machine that she believes is going to help her find her mum. Years later, as a gifted data scientist in a dystopic surveillance state, she is drawn into a world of espionage, shadowy corporations, eco-terrorists and hackers through the love she feels for an elusive artist. And that's how you write a blurb. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you like this bookish video, I think you might like some of these bookish videos too. Do subscribe so you don't miss a video and thank you to the Gumption Club for making this and all my other videos possible. If you'd like to join them, you can pop over to Patreon or maybe just pop up into the comments and tell me what you are reading currently. That's all from me, Frog Snog out.